Hello everyone, this is Renee Pena with Snapstream. I'm filling in for Mike Lopez today. Right now, we'll get started in a few minutes right here at the top of the hour. Right before we start though, I just want to make one final attempt. Make sure that my audio is working correctly and my video is working correctly. Obviously, if you can hear my voice, this goes much better. Do you confirm that for me in the chat box? Thank you to those who have already done it. If you can see my screen, which you should be seeing, it's a blue Snapstream TV search screen. That'll be our PowerPoint that we'll go through right before. Uh, but if you can see that, just confirm that for me. Greatly appreciate it. And we'll get started right at the top of the hour. I want to make sure we get you guys out of here on time. Thank you. Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is Renee Pena from Snapstream Media, filling in for Mike Lopez today. We're going to go ahead and get our webinar started now. Now it's the top of the hour. We're going to start with going through our outline, and then we'll move through the PowerPoint itself, and then on to our, our, our live demo here. But once again, thank you for joining us, and let's go ahead and get started. If at any point in time you have any questions, feel free to ask us. Let us know in the chat box. I have several teammates of mine here standing by ready to answer those questions for you. If the audio drops out or the video feed drops out, you let us know. Thank you. Let's go ahead and get this rolling. Today's outline will be roughly 60 minutes. I'm going to try and get you guys that right, right, at, right out at the top of the hour as well. What we're going to do is we're going to go through this outline. What is Snapstream? We'll give you a quick, quick refresher on that. Why do other people use Snapstream? Why should you use Snapstream? Then we'll dive into that live demo. For those of you who have to opt out for whatever reason, 
we, this webinar will be recorded and we'll send out a link to that after our webinar is, is complete. At the end of our, our demo, we'll, I'll go over the questions that were popped into our, our chat box here. And if there's any that apply to the whole group, I'll go over them for everybody. But as we, again, once again, as we're going through this, if you have any questions, if I'm going too fast, need me to go back and explain something in more detail, definitely let us know and I'll be sure to do that for you. This here on the right-hand side, you'll see that the GoToWebinar controls are here. The chat box that we're referring to is this bottom one here with the green arrow here at the bottom. With that said, we'll go ahead and get this guy started. We are, who is Snapstream? We make the best TV recording search tool in the market. I like to say the quick synopsis for us is that we allow you to record thousands of hours of TV and then search within that TV content based on keywords and phrases, all based on the closed caption data. We count over 500 private, government or, private and government organizations as our customers. That's stretching over, obviously, the government sector, the education sector. Then we have a lot of people in our entertainment, which sector which would cover production companies, TV shows, really any kind of repurposing content. So we also do have private companies and public companies as well that use Snapstream for various TV monitoring and recording needs. So what is Snapstream? As I said previously, it's a TV monitoring solution that allows you to record and search and archive nearly unlimited TV content, thousands and thousands of hours. Think of it as a TiVo or a DVR of steroids. If you've ever heard it described that way, that is basically what it is. Snapstream is a DVR at its heart. You own the hardware. It's under your complete control. It sits in your office, and you're able to set what recordings you want, what shows you what are important to you. Then go in and search that content. Again, once again, like I said before, based on keywords and phrases. On top of that, you're able to clip share and do a lot of other functions with our software and hardware, which you'll see as we progress through this demo. So how does it work? Snapstream, which you're seeing here, this server here in the middle, is what we actually sell. You would, in theory, get one of these servers here, or appliances, and put it into your organization. You would set it in between your workstation, whether it's a laptop or a tablet or a desktop, and your TV source. In this particular example here, you see an antenna. It can be a lot more than an antenna. We take in uh, ATSC feeds, NTSC feeds, so if it's cable or satellite, doesn't matter. If it's over the air antenna, we also take QAM feeds, so it's HD. Um, digital or analog does not matter. We also take in ASI feeds, and starting next, very recently, we're also taking in IP feeds as well. So let's get just a real quick recap there. You'll have your source on one end, plug it into Snapstream, and then you can access it from anywhere on your local network, via your laptop, desktop, tablet, or MacBook. So who uses Snapstream? You see here on the right side kind of our division of sectors. Teachers are using Snapstream for supplemental content, streaming education, educational programs and clips into their classroom, obviously to enhance their, le their learning process and their lesson plan. Maybe there's a special on George Washington that a history teacher might want to bring into their classroom. Television producers are clipping content from TV to help their screenwriters create you know, the best monologues, the funniest stuff, the most newsworthy items to recap. Examples being like The Daily Show and The Colbert Report. We are actually how those two particular shows get all their clips. That's how their posts are, are satirizing all those crazy things politicians and have said and, and newscasters have said. Public information officers are wanting to know what's being said about in the local news about their officials and their policies. They want to know if it's something great that they want to you know tout and push out there. They say, hey, look at the great thing we did. Or maybe they want to know what's being uh, used it as a reactive tool, wanting to know, hey, that they want to put their own, I guess, company spin on how they're being portrayed in the media. Say they would publish this for private companies, say a company like Google, for example, or maybe Microsoft might want to know what's being set up, spoken about them there in the media. So they're 
monitoring stuff for that particular reason so that they could then control the span on those on their companies. Researchers at journalism schools are conducting content analysis to study broadcast television. I mean, that one kind of speaks for itself. We've seen examples where schools are, I'm sorry, yes, yeah, schools or professors specifically are researching what is being broadcast to children and analyzing content that way. Networks and local broadcasters, they use it as a reliable way to record content. They, all, they use it for a couple different things. One of them is a verification tool for air checks. Another for production and sales production and sales management. Um, KHOU 11 here at the bottom is actually a customer of ours right here based in Houston, Texas. Uh, they're using it to verify that their ads, that ads that their salesmen have sold are airing on TV and sending it to their end customers. The entertainment site, I mentioned earlier the Daily Show and Colbert Report. You see plenty of other examples here and we actually have quite a few more than this here. They're looking for interesting content to re-air on their programs they're spending less time looking for this content and more time, as it says here, writing those great jokes or those great headlines or those great monologues that they need to entertain everybody and keep that captive audience. And it makes it a lot faster for them to find that content and get it to air that much easier. Not having to sit in front of a television and hit, you know, rewind or watch or fast forward and watch, you know, the entire program to find that specific clip being able to you know, search within Snapstream and go directly to it, as you'll see later, makes this process a lot easier uh, and a lot more fast. Government actually is, um, government actually the first line there is actually referring back to something I just said for our, our, our entertainment customers. You're not having to worry about sitting in front of a DVR and watching hours of video to find that specific clip able to go directly to that particular point in the program, as you'll see later, clip that out and turn it around for whatever process they need it for then. They're using it to respond to media proactively. Like I mentioned earlier, maybe they might want to know what's being said by a specific, or specific policy or a specific official. Automatic alerts allow you to know when a mo the moment a story breaks. It's actually, a, 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 we made a big advance on that particular feature that I'll show you later, but think of alerts, keep alerts in mind as a saved search. I'm able to find out or get an email when a specific item that I'm interested in pops up in one of my recordings. And again, I'll go into more detail how that works a little bit later, but keep alerts in mind. You're also going to share positive content or even maybe negative content with employees and coworkers with our built-in sharing tools. We have the ability to upload clips to the Amazon cloud and then share with people within your organization or even outside of your organization. That's, another, that's actually something that one of the advances we made to our alerts features, which you'll see a little later. Corporates and nonprofits, you see a number of examples here as well. As I mentioned earlier, it's a great way for companies like Yahoo and Salvation Army, the United Way, Procter & Gamble to manage its brand and presence in television. They're able the same way as those PIOs would edit at a government facility manage and find out what's being spoken about them in the news or across different television programs so that they could then use it to either tout it or put a positive spin, the company's spin, on it. They're also using it as a competitive advantage of seeing what's being spoken about their, comp their competitors, how the advances that they're making. The education sector, as I mentioned before, they're using it to bring content into the classroom, supplemental content, enhancing that learning experience, keeping those children engaged. They're also using it to provide TV to the classrooms in a much simpler way instead of having to install cable drops as we've, as we've seen in, recently with schools. They're moving away from cable drops and moving more to an IP source. So this is definitely something that's helping them along with that. Journalism departments, Something we've also seen is they're using, they're creating classes around TV content. How would you report this news item versus how the professional did it? They're also analyzing the content, figuring out why there might be a bias here or a bias there, or what, or even critiquing it to see where they could do better. They're using, there's all sorts of different uses within the education sector, so if you need more examples on that, we can touch on those later. 
So with that brief overview out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and jump directly into our live demo here. For anybody that's recently joined us, if you have any questions, just ask them in our chat box. I have a couple of teammates of mine here sitting, standing by to answer those for you. Again, if I speak too fast or you would like me to go into something more detail, again, let us know there and I'll be sure to back up and go over it in greater detail. So I'm using Mozilla Firefox to access Snapstream here from our web portal. You could actually use Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, and if you're on a Mac, maybe Apple Safari. You can really use any of those browsers and all of them work equally well. Personally, I've always grown up using Mozilla Firefox. That's the browser I'm most comfortable in, so that's the one I'm going to use. Here for my username and password, you're able to use LDAP or LDAP integration, or you can create your own username and password from scratch. Here at Snapstream, we've uh, used LDAP integration, so my credentials for Snapstream are the same for everything else I would use. Here. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and log in here. and I'm taken to my home screen here. As you can see, it looks like a very simple, very simplistic layout. I have a search bar here, a couple items here, and then along the top here, we have my search tab, my alerts tab, my library, my program guide, reporting manager, tasks, and admin. I'll touch on each of these as we go throughout our demo here, but I'm going to start in the admin page just because I want to give you guys an idea of what I'm working with here. So this gives me a good overview here, but specifically what I want you guys to see is my tuners page. So what you're seeing here is the number of tuners that I have on my Snapstream system. And what that means, this number 20 means I have 20 active or 20 available tuners. And what that specifically means is that I'm able to record up to 20 channels simultaneously. It doesn't mean that I'm locked into any specific 20 it's just that I'm able to concurrently record 20 right now. I could record those same 20 an hour from now. Maybe I'm recording a completely different 20, or maybe I'm mixing and matching 10 of, the, 10 of my original 20 and then 10 whole new ones. That's all it means. I'm able to record up to 10 programs simultaneously at any given time. Our Snapstream systems actually can hold up to 10 in a single box. As you're seeing here, I actually have 20, though, which means here in our demo system, we have two systems that have been clustered together to look like one giant system. Your technical admins would, be, would probably be the only people to know that there's actually two systems physically there. Your end user, when they start doing the searches and when they start going to the library and when they start doing the clips, will only actually see one system. They won't realize it's actually two. So it makes it easier to manage for the end user as well as the admin. Um, there's no worrying about where the clip is, if it's on Snapstream 1 or Snapstream 2, it's just on Snapstream. With that in mind, I'm going to move over to our program guide here. This is actually probably where most end users will start. Our program guide here, data that's about to populate, is supplied to us by Tribune Media. It's something that we pay for and give to you guys as part of our, as, as part of our, our support. But as you see here, our program guide is a very simple, sleek interface. Times along the top, channels along the bottom, your information here in the middle here. And it's a simple drag and drop interface. I can scroll around, pull up and down, and even jump forward in time if I need to. What you're seeing here, all the red dots are items that have been scheduled to record. So right now I'm going to look for something that hasn't been scheduled to record just to show you what, op what the options look like. So I'm going to click on Flash Gordon here. And so, actually, a movie is not the best example for that. I'm sorry. Let's go with something that looks like a series here. For Your Home. So when I click on For Your Home, I get a plethora of options here on my right-hand side. What you're seeing here at the top is a brief description of the program, what the title of the program is. If there's an episode title, it'll be there as well, as well as a description of that particular episode. Occasionally, you also see actors listed there and stuff like that. But your actual options are here at uh, here right below. I have the ability to watch live television. So if I have an open tuner and 
the program is actually airing. I'll be able to watch it live. If I need to record just that particular episode of For Your Home, that first option, record this episode would be it. If I wanted to record all episodes of For Your Home whenever they air on, what is that, K-U-H-T-2, if I needed to record all episodes, that would be my third option there would be what I would need to do. If I only wanted to record new episodes, uh, I could select that. And if that would refer to anything like this Jeopardy that's right below it that's marked as the has new written red letters. Anytime it's something marked that way, it'll record that. But obviously something that isn't doesn't have the red new on it, it wouldn't capture. The last option there is record everything on this channel. You see a, a lot of our stuff is scheduled to record across the board here. That is basically a 24-7 recording. I'll record everything on that channel pretty much no matter what unless I have something uh, that's a higher priority. One question that does pop up whenever people ask me about the 24-7 recording, they ask me if it's one long file or if it's individual files broken up into their unique programs. They are unique programs, so on this particular example, 1021 KPRC, what's happening here is you're going to have a separate file for Local 2 News at 4 p.m. You have a separate file for Extra, a separate file for Local 2 News at 5 p.m., and so on and so forth. The 24-7 recording does break it up into its own individual blocks. With that said, once you actually set all your programs, the programs that you're interested in to record, and once those recordings actually take place, what will happen then is they'll get moved to your library. So let's go ahead and do that. I like to say there's two ways to search for content within Snapstream. I like to refer to our library as our manual way, although it's a lot more sophisticated than that. And I like to refer to our actual keyword search as our, as our secret sauce of our bread and butter, the heart of our product. But while we're here in the library, there's a couple things I do want to touch on, show you guys a couple cool tricks. Our library is, uh, is listed in chronological order. Newest stuff is going to be listed at the top. Anything with a red dot on it is something that's currently recording. As I scroll down here, you'll notice that the red dots will start to disappear, like right here. That means that program has already been completed. Uh, the recording has been completed. And you'll see that if there's a longer uh, programs that started earlier and still recording, like this MLB baseball game here, they'll also have the red dot as well. But again, like I said, it's in chronological order, and obviously newest, the oldest stuff will be on the, on the further pages down here. I'm going to continue to stay in our library here, but I'm going to show you a couple of uh, other things. Like I said, I refer to this more as a manual way just because you're looking at a, a chronological list. But if you actually want to drill down in here, there's actually some really neat ways to do it. So these series, these folders, I'm sorry, these links along the side here are mostly drop-down boxes that are autocomplete to help you drill down your library a little bit further. This isn't the search that I was referring to earlier, but this is a neat way to do stuff too. So I, saw, I believe I saw the first one was Tosh.0. So I'm just going to use that as a quick example. Type in Tosh.0, it auto completes the Tosh.0, it says I have 26, and so when I drill down into it, it'll just narrow everything down to just my Tosh.0 episode. So if I know which specific episode I'm looking for, or even if I don't, I can drill down to this and kind of read their program descriptions and get to whatever it is I'm looking for this way. I can do the same thing by channel if I wanted to, so if I wanted everything that was on, say, Comedy Central, I could do that as well, and it's like it's all Tosh.0 except for a couple things there. And again, I can continue to do this on the different links there. The other ones here are, are folder, daily, weekly, monthly, but the other three at the bottom here are a little bit different, versus those are primarily talking about full shows. You also have clips available to you here. So maybe I'm looking for all the clips that have been made on Snapstream. Maybe I'm looking for specifically the clips I've made. And then playlists, is, which is a cool new feature that we've added a couple releases ago, is if I wanted to stack a couple items to play back to back to back, I could create my own playlist and then play them back here. But let's go back to the library before I touch on that stuff and show you what else is going on on this particular page. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and find two items that aren't, aren't uh, both recording. So Ellen DeGeneres Show and Tosh.0. Notice again, Tosh.0 is not recording. Uh, the Ellen DeGeneres Show is recording. I just want to show you a couple differences between the two here. They both share play function, and so they can obviously both be played back. That's a good thing to point out. You can play back an item even though it's, a, it's 
currently recording. You don't have to wait till it's finished playing. To, I'm sorry, finished recording to play it back. You can play it back live. The second thing they share in common is the add to multi-view. It's a feature I'll show you guys in a few minutes here, but I'm able to play up to four streams at the same time on one window. I could play less than that. I could play only a single uh, frame if I want, but I can also easily play two or three at the same time as well. Where they start to differ are on stuff like extend recording versus download. Obviously something that's already completed recording, I wouldn't be able to extend that recording. But something like Ellen that's currently airing, if I needed to extend that recording for any reason, I could easily click that there and add the number of minutes or time that I need to it to extend it to. Where you'll see this coming, where we see this coming in common place, it's more with live events, maybe sporting events or speeches. So if you know a football game is, is said it's only going to be three hours long, but we know that it's normally three and a half, maybe even four, I might want to set some extra padding there for a half hour, an hour to extend that recording for you. Where you have download on Tosh.0 but not on Ellen DeGeneres, you can only download a, an item once it's completed its recording. Once again, you can play it back. You can actually clip from it as well, but you can't download it until once it, the, the, the segment itself is completed. Uh, the recording itself has been completed. Obviously, you can't write, uh, download something that's still being written to. You can view the transcript in both, actually. Uh, the transcript, what you'll see later, is actually a snippet of the, uh, sorry, is the closed caption data. And so you're able to view that even in, within live programming, you're able to view the transcript as it's, as it's rolling along there. So I'll click down on the more here just to show you a couple of other things that are there. You're able to download the transcript as well. Uh, on either one of them. You're able to find more episodes of either one of them and you're able to edit the job, meaning if you if it was a 24-7 recording versus a episode recording versus a one-time episode recording or all episode recording, stuff like that. Edit item would be more referring to if I needed to change the episode title or the program title or something like that. But you can only do that for items that are already recorded. So there's a few other things real quick. I'm going to touch on this more actions button here for you. Show squeeze is our internal term for transcoding, flipping, converting one file from another, from one file format to another. We record in the native MPEG-2 transport stream, which you see here. We, it's a large file format. We keep it that way so we don't lose any quality to it. But if you need it to be in, say, .mov, .wmv, .h.264, something like that, we have the ability to do that with our show squeeze feature. Our smart chapter feature is our way of identifying commercial breaks. Not the individual commercials themselves, but the commercial breaks. Basically, if you think of when a talk show says, now we go to commercial and when we and welcome back from commercial, that segment in between there it identifies it for you. That way, if you need to go to the commercials or skip over them, you have the ability. Move is just simply moving something within Snapstream, export out, export out. Workflow is something I'll touch on once we return back to the admin page. Stop recording. Is a little bit self-explanatory. Keep until I delete and keep until space is needed. Those two are within themselves, they're self-explanatory, but the reason I want to bring them up specifically is Snapstream is by default a last in, last out system. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me rephrase that. First in, first out system. So it'll take the oldest content and then delete it to make room for the newest content. So if I have a show that's a month old and it needs to be erased to make room for a new episode, unless it's marked keep until I delete, it will, it will delete that oldest episode to make room for that newest episode. Mark is new and Mark is lost. Self-explanatory, same as Mark is read, Mark unread, but then an email, I'm sure you guys have, have done that before. And add to playlist, once again, if I wanted to play several things back to back, I have the ability to add them to a playlist from here. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a couple of different ways. Okay, with that said, I think I've touched on everything within our library. We're going to go to our search, and then once we get to our search, we'll actually see what the web player looks like and how to clip stuff and all the fun stuff that we'll get from there. So I'm going to use a term that I'm sure will get me a lot of results. I'm going to use President Obama, or actually I'm going to use Obama first. So when I type in Obama, I get 8,630 results. So how is it doing that? So what it's doing is it's searching all my record, it's taking all my recordings, parsing the closed caption data, and figuring out where in those recordings Obama was mentioned. So let's take a, a quick look at some of this real quick, and then I'll go into a little bit more detail. 
So what you're seeing here, this paragraph, this paragraph, and this paragraph, and so on and so forth, is actually the closed caption data. So that's how we generate our transcript. And you see Obama is bolded here. If you see it's Obama with an uh, apostrophe S, so it uh, means possessive there. So we do actually take not only the normal, the pronoun version of it, we also take the possessive term of it. We also have his bolded here and he bolded here. So it's also looking for mentions that refer back to my original search term so that I don't miss these addi this additional commentary that was also in reference to what I was looking for. That said, 8,630 results, as cool as it is to read this real quick and figure out if that's the clip that I'm interested in without even playing it back yet, as cool as that is, 8,630 results is a lot to manage. So I'm going to drill it down a little bit more by adding an additional search term to it. I'm going to do President Obama, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add quotes to it to make sure I'm getting the exact phrase I want. We do use uh, Boolean search terms as well, so if you wanted to add an, use the word and, or, just like you would on Google, use those same search terms here. So I've drilled down that 8,000, I believe it was 600 number, to 4,465. Still a lot of results. This is why we've actually added, you know, we've always had these in the, in the past, but we made it a little bit easier to use our filters. So I'm going to remove that search term for just a second here and show you what our drop-down box is. So if I were, if I had an empty box and I just hit the down arrow, my filters, my additional filters that are built into Snapstream populate. I, have, I can search by actor, after, after and after clip, before and before clip. There's a kind of date parameters. I also have a set date parameter as well. Basically, think of those as before X date, before, after Y date. Call sign, category, channel. Those are a little bit self-explanatory. Maybe if I wanted to search for something in the category of comedy or news or sports, something along those lines. You can also search by credit. I, I mentioned date earlier. Program description would be this guy here. I can add custom tags. If I wanted to search by custom tags, I can search by that with using this particular term. I can also search by title and text. So I'm going to use a couple of those search parameters in conjunction with my President Obama search and see how quickly I can drill down and find that needle in a haystack mention. So we have 4,465 down from our original number of 8,600 something. So then first I'm going to use a date filter. I can actually do a couple things here. I can use a hard date, like today's date, June 10, 2014. I could use actually the word today. I could use the word yesterday. I can even use something like last week. So I'm going to do that real quick. Hit enter. And now I've drilled down to 2,673. Great. That's still a lot. I'm going to drill down a little bit further. You can actually stack our filters and parameters on top of each other to do this. So I'm going to do category. And I'm going to do the same way uh, your, your options populate that. I'll do category of comedy and hit enter. And I drill down to 53. Great. I want to drill down just a little bit more. And I'm going to drill down to channel. I'm going to look specific. Oops. I'm going to look specifically for KHOU. That's our local uh, CBS affiliate, if I remember correctly. And I've drilled down to 17. Looks like it's all on one page here. Yes, it is. So we've drilled down just in a matter of a few moments there, drilled down from 8,600, whatever the number was, down to 17. It's a much more manageable number. I can read these and figure out, hey, is this the clip I'm looking for? Does this seem interesting? If I find something that I like, I can then go ahead and hit play and play it back. So we're about to go into our web player for the first time. Just a word of warning, being streamed over go to webinar. It's going to be a little bit choppy. I'll turn off the audio so you can hear that it plays back fine. Anybody who's seen Snapstream in person or sees it for themselves will know that it actually does play back normally, like a normal stream will. So just wanted to give you guys a quick word of warning there. So go ahead and play on this particular one here, late, The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. Turn my volume a little bit so you can hear it once it populates. Okay, so real quick, I'm going to go ahead and pause it. I wanted to point out a couple of things that are going on. Right here on our bottom right, left-hand corner here is our normal traditional playback button. Normal DVR controls, play, fast forward, rewind, volume, full screen, 
uh, skip back, skip forward. I also have my toolbar functions here. But while we're focusing on this particular corner of the screen here, I want to point out that we started at, well, our time stamp here says 12.17 a.m. It didn't start at the beginning of the program. You didn't, we didn't have, and you already heard that Obama was mentioned, uh, right, as Craig Ferguson was speaking there. You heard President Obama's name mentioned. You actually can see it here highlighted, or sorry, in bold here. So what happened is it jumped immediately to that point in the program. It gave you a couple seconds of buffer just to give you a good idea of the context that it was being spoken in. We didn't have to scrub to the point in the program to find it. It took us immediately there. So it saves you time that way. But what else is going on screen here? I, I mentioned we have our toolbar functions here. We have our clip start button, our clip end button, and then our clip execute button. We also have our screenshot button and our jump to button. So if I need to use the screenshot button to take a picture of Craig Ferguson here, I could just simply click that button and grab a quick screen grab. What else is going on here? We have a program title at the top. Normally you might also see a, a, a episode title if it was applicable. You have a brief uh, uh, description of the program, the actors and actresses that are involved in it. You have the ability to download directly from watching it, look for more information. If you need to share this with somebody who's on the Snapstream network, you can pass it along to them. What you're seeing below here, as I mentioned before, is the transcript, is the closed caption data. What's in blue is what was just being spoken. The item in bold is your is your actual search parameter. You also have a and actually let me point this out. You notice it says search result one of three. If I wanted to click forward to the next result, it'll jump forward for me and move to the next result. Could you pull Not sure why those are. I don't see the President Obama mentioned there, but it's there. That it typically will show you where the Obama mentions are. The other tabs here are your action tabs, your show squeeze, which I touched on earlier. If you needed to transcode one file from an, from one format to another, smart chapter to identify where those commercial breaks were, run workflow or automated processes, they could take care of those items, show squeeze and smart chapter for you automatically in the background. Again, I'll show you more of what those look like a little bit later. Export, obviously, we touched on. Add to playlist. Obviously, if I wanted to add, you know, a specific clip or an entire show to a playlist and watch it back to back. The newest feature that we've added, or one of the newest features that we've added, is add segments to playlists. Instead of adding an entire or making a whole new clip, it'll instead add segment markers to show you where to play those. Or, sorry, it'll add segment markers to the particular program so that when you view it back in the playlist. It'll just show you that particular portion of the program without actually creating a separate clip. Now I can show you a good example of that in one of our playlists in, in just a moment. Tag, our custom tag. If I wanted to put man in a blue tie, monologue, anything I wanted to put as, as a custom tag for this particular piece, I can add it here, save it, and then search for it later. Question that does come up quite a bit is if this is a time-based tag or not. It's not. It's just a tag for the entire show. Time-based tags are the next evolution of this feature. We're not sure when it'll come, but it'll it'll come sometime. And then our another really new feature that we've added with this release is search the transcript. So I'm able to search within our transcript here right from the program. So if I wanted to go ahead and type in Obama again and hit search, it'll take me it'll take me to right before that mention once again. A Polish tabloid released pictures of Obama and it was hit. As you can hear it there. So let's say now I'm looking at the viewer and I've found the clip I want. And I now I'm time to actually make that clip. So let's show you what that process looks like. I go to the top here, select my clip start button. I could let it play or I can just skip around or I can drag and drop my cursor here and figure out where I want it to do. I'm going to use our skip forward by 30 seconds button. Now I'm just going to make about a minute long clip here. I'm going to hit my clip endpoint. Obviously, you're going to want to be more accurate than I'm being here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit my clip execute button once I'm satisfied with the markers. So I'm going to put Craig Ferguson, Craig, Craig F. Uh, Ferguson. I'm probably spelling that wrong. Oh, looks like that's correct. Uh, Craig Ferguson clip. Set it my title, whatever it needs to be. Put it in the appropriate folder. Maybe it's just in the clips folder. Maybe it's in one of those others. And then I have the ability to process that clip a little bit further. If I select the None feature, it'll just create the clip. If I select Share Clip, what will happen there 
is that it'll upload the clip to the Amazon Cloud, send myself and anyone I'd like to share that clip with a link in an email, and then they'll be able to play it back from any from any who is on any words with an internet connection. Uh, you play it back on a, your computer, your tablet, your cell phone, your BlackBerry, your iPhone, your tablet. We even tested it on video game systems, and it seemed to work fine there too. So it pretty much works just about anywhere. Upload clip, if you wanted to upload this clip to YouTube, you have the ability to do that. You just gotta create a YouTube account, set it as the uh, set it that way in the admin page. And tweet clip, that's the newest one of the newest features that we've also added here. You now have the ability to tweet this clip clip directly to Twitter. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm gonna type in uh, webinar example as my tweet. Obviously, I want to put something much better than that. You have your normal, you know, your normal Twitter parameters. You've got to keep it within a certain character count. You have to set up an account for it as well. But once you're happy with your tweet, you can go ahead and hit clip. And actually, anybody who has access to Twitter right now, the clip that we're tweeting out will be from at Snap Sales Team. You can actually find us on Twitter and see the clip right there. What should normally happen here after I click on really any of my actions here, whether it's clip, whether it's share the clip, whether it's tweet the clip or upload the clip, typically what will happen is I'll get a balloon or a bubble that populates here. I'm not quite sure why I haven't done it yet, but it'll upload, it'll let me know how the progress on my particular task is going. Um, it doesn't need a populate so that to for it to actually happen. It's just normally a good indicator, and I'm not quite sure why it isn't here. But if you do see it in the future, you'll know that's what it is. So I'll go back to the library just real quick, show you a couple other things now that we've looked at our player. And there goes that bubble that I was talking about. So I want to go specifically to my clips. You'll notice that they actually had a couple different options than the previous view the library had. Clips have the ability to share a clip directly from the library as well as tweet the clip and upload to YouTube. The prior view of the library where it had all full shows you cannot do those items with full shows short of actually going into the program itself. You can only tweet and share clips. You're not able to do the entire program. Now, moving back to our library, I did say I wanted to show you guys the OLTE view, and I'm going to do that real quick here. I'm going to click a couple of random things. Obviously, you want it to be more, uh, I'm sorry, it's not how you do it. I'll click on a couple of random things. You want to obviously you want to you know find better examples, but add some multi view. And you'll see that populates as one here. Add some multi view again. Add some multi view. Add some multi view. Once I'm happy with the number of streams or I found the correct programs or correct clips, I'm able to go ahead and play, play multiple items. Once again, sorry, I apologize for the choppiness in advance. It's just an artifact of webinar. Go to webinar again. Now we hit pause all. Say. Okay, so I do want to touch on a couple things here on this particular screen. What you'll see here in blue, highlighted in blue, in this particular box here, this is our primary box. Anytime I want to make a clip, if I, anytime I want to hear the audio, I'll hear the primary box and the primary box only. So I'm going to go ahead and hit play on all of them again, which what you'll notice is you're only going to hear ESPN. Always been impressed with the way Derek Fisher played the game and went about his business. I think he'll be a great coach. But if I wanted to switch to this commercial here, it looks like that would be Curious George. All I have to do is select Curious George. We believe a little bit of curious. And it'll switch over to that particular box. And once again, my clipping tools and functions work on the primary box. So if I selected clip, star clip in, clip execute, it'd work on this particular box here. Each of them have their own tools. So if I wanted to jump forward only in this particular program, I could do it. If I want to jump all the way to the end over here, I could do it. And again, they'll play back. They have their again, once again, they have their own pause, fast forward, and rewind tools while all the others are playing there. But I do have the, the, the global pause and global global play button here. One other cool thing that we can do here is if I wanted to sync all these to the same time, I have this button here that says sync to current time. And what it'll do is it'll look at this at this program that's at 237 and sync them all about looks like a half hour program. So what it'll do is it'll, it'll sync them all to either 237 or seven minutes into the program. 
And what you'll see is they're all at 237, so they, except for this guy on the bottom right-hand corner. Since they didn't air, start airing at the same time, it just sank it seven minutes into that particular program. And that's our multiplayer there. If anybody has any questions about our multiplayer, be sure to let us know in the chat box. I've noticed a couple questions coming in, and I will cover those at the end of our, our demo here. Uh, but keep them coming in. I see that our, my teammates here are answering them for you guys. So we do want to keep a asking questions and helping you guys out. I said we were going to show you guys what a playlist looks like. I'm going to go to the all clips, or my clips specifically. And I'm going to, oops, let me get rid of that. I'm going to add the late show, the Craig Ferguson clip that we added, and I want to add it to a playlist. I can create a new playlist if I want, or I can add it to an existing playlist. I am going to add it to my home runs playlist. Doesn't make sense, but I'm going to go ahead and add it there because I want to show you guys uh, another example. I'm going to add it real quick, add it to playlist, and I'm going to go now to my playlist the feature. If I hit details, you'll see that I have a couple items here. All so, you know, right under a minute long. You can add much longer clips than that if you want, but my clips are very specific. They're only a few minutes long or a few seconds long each one. So I'm going to hit play real quick just to show you guys a couple little things. It's our normal player. It takes the transcript with you. The clip will take the transcript with it, or the, that segment of the transcript anyway, and it'll play. I'm going to go ahead and skip to the end here on a couple of them. What these first three are, I believe it's the first three, are actual clips. And so you see how it plays immediately. But what I'm trying to get to here is our segmented clip. And I believe it's the next one after this particular one. And I'm going to skip and I'm going to hit play, or sorry, pause immediately after. Oh, sorry, not that one either. Great, okay. So Previously, what was happening was it was playing my individual clips and then moving right on to the next one, refreshing essentially and moving on to the next one. And those were individual clips that I had created before. As we saw as our option earlier, the ability to add segments to playlists, and I believe it's here under the Actions tab, Add Segments to Playlist, you have these red markers here. You can barely see that one, but you can see this one clearly here. Instead of me creating a whole separate file like I did with those previous four, I believe, it's instead just setting markers, and it'll just play it out just right there instead for me. I'm going to move forward a little bit, let it hit the end. It should just take a few seconds there. And once it gets to the end of that particular red marker, again, it should just take a second there. And it'll move on to the next the clip that we made just a few minutes ago. So that's our playlist feature. Again, it's a very useful feature anytime you've got to watch multiple clips back to back in succession. Instead of having to go back to the library over and over and over again, uh, you can just watch it from there. So the alerts feature, I, I said earlier to keep it in mind earlier, I said it's a basically a saved search. In broad terms, if I find a particular topic that I'm constantly looking for every morning, I can do a saved search, it's called an alert, and it'll run the search for me on Snapstream itself, and then shoot me an email update the next morning telling me, hey, this is where your, shirt, your search terms showed up. So I'm going to go ahead and edit one of these guys. I'm going to use uh, this one here. And I call this, this is my breaking news alert. I'm able to set the name of the alert. I'm able to set who I want it to go to, who I want it to come from, and I'm able to set the interval as well as what time does it come. So for me, this comes at 9 a.m. every day, assuming that there's actual, an actual uh, hit on my search term. I can change those intervals to any of these options here. Then I'm able to process these search results a couple different ways. Before I touch on those, I do want to show you that here at the bottom is where you would actually enter your search terms. So for me, my two search terms for this particular alert are this is breaking news, in quotes, and breaking news just in. 
So you see that I have seven results and three results currently found in my recording data. Um, so it just let it, it, every day, if, if tomorrow I only have one result, it'll send me an email saying, hey, Renee, this is breaking news appeared in, on KHOU 11 at this time in this program. So they'll shoot me that email. But what process results does for us, this is, and this is actually encapsulates two new features for us, are clip and clip and share. None was there previously. It just would just send me the email alert just saying, hey, this is where the where those mentions were at. What clip does for me is it automatically will clip this is breaking news and breaking news just in. It'll it'll parse the data, but parse the closed captioning and figure out where it thinks it started talking about this is breaking news and where it started where it thinks it stopped talking about breaking news and then add a little bit of padding to create a clip for me. So that way I don't have to actually go in there myself and create all these clips. It'll just run as a task in the background. Clip and share is that exact same feature except it takes it a step further as in that share clip feature that I mentioned earlier. And I actually will show you guys that in a moment. I feel bad for skipping over that. Clip and share, what that'll do is, is it'll upload it again to the Amazon Cloud, like I said before, automatically for me, and then shoot me an email to whoever I designated as the email recipient. So by, in this particular example, clip and share, I'm getting the email that says the alert appeared here. And that same exact email that says my alert appeared here, I'm also getting the clips that, that I decided to share with myself. So I used breaking news specifically. I had imagined maybe a PIO or a, or a public information officer for a police department or a city official you know, might set this as a breaking news alert and then they're out in the field and so they would automatically want to know what, what if any breaking news appeared on their local NBC affiliate or local ABC affiliate and they could get that shared clip directly to their phone. It's kind of what my thinking was with this particular example. Let me hit test alert now real quick. I do want you guys to see what this looks like. Hopefully I got it. I did, and I'm going to drag my other uh, screen there over. What you're seeing is the example search result. I don't think I have any clips made for this because there wasn't any new ones for today. Yeah, they're from a, actually from a day ago. Uh, but what you're seeing here is just the same stuff that you would see in our search page. It's the, it's the bolded mention. It's the snippet of the closed caption. And I actually have my play. Since I'm actually logged into Snapchat, I'm able to hit play on one of these guys and go directly to it, view transcript, and so on and so forth. And you'll see that both my search terms are included in the same exact email. It's not broken into separate emails. And again, if I had clips that I'm sorry, mentions that happened after I created this alert, because I actually did just set it up. Um, if I had previously had clips that, I'm sorry, clips that would uh, trigger my function, it would actually have included the clip itself in the email. Then I'm going to go right back to our library, to my clips folder, just so you guys see what the share clip function looks like. What it'll you have the ability, again, to share it with anyone you want, send it from anyone you want. You have the subject of the email, and then you can actually put in a message as well, put webinar example, again, and hit send. And so the same process that I mentioned earlier will happen. It'll take the clip. It'll use, again, use the word show squeeze. We'll show squeeze it, then upload it to the Amazon cloud. After it's done that, it'll then shoot me the email so that I can then share it with, or I can watch it myself or share it with others. Okay, so while that's going on, go, I do want to again, again encourage you guys to ask more questions. If you have any questions about our show sharing feature or tweet or, or, or tweet feature, be sure to ask. Oh, actually, um, one just came in, and it's good that I did the share feature, so I can actually hit on this now. It does pertain to both Twitter and the share feature. Ask what if there's any limits to it. There, I said earlier, you can't share uh, full shows, but there's actually no um, upper limit on terms of file size or duration. You just can't share the full show. The, the, the share clip option isn't even available from the library or within the show itself. Uh, but the other limits, you have a 20,000 view limit 
or a 14-day expiration, whichever one you, you hit first. The, in regards to Twitter, that limitation is still there, but at the end of the month, that limit will be raised. Our engineering team hasn't told us how high they're going to raise that limit for you. But if you have, say, you know, 100,000 followers on Twitter, if you manage to somehow get 20,000 to reach them and that 20,001 20, person wouldn't be able to watch it, we're taking that into account, so we're going to go ahead and raise that limit. Again, don't know what the limit's going to be yet. Uh, we'll pass that information along as soon as we get it. I did say I wanted to go back to the admin page towards the end of our demo here, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. Just real quickly, I'm going to go over workflows, because I do want to get you guys out of here in a few minutes. I'm going to add a new workflow. As I said earlier, workflows are automated processes. They take care of items for you in the background, so you don't have to do them every day or at any, any particular given time. So, for example, let's say I prefer to work in the file format H.264. Earlier I said we record the native MPEG-2 transport stream, but I prefer to work with H.264. What I can do is I can set up a workflow to have my items automatically transco to that file format for me. I can set a trigger condition of when that recording is finished. I can even set it to happen while that recording is going on, so it will do live transcoding for me. I can have it set to only clips created or X amount of days after recording is finished. You can actually see a couple of the other options there. But let's say I wanted it when the recording is finished. I can even set what groups are able to run this particular uh, <laughs> what groups are able to run that particular workflow. Uh, I'm able to set particular filters. So if I only wanted only cared about you know programs on CNN or HLN or ESPN or uh, Fox News Network or Channel, if I only cared about the, the the programs on Fox News, I could set that as my filter. Basically, what would happen here is all programs on the Fox News channel, as soon as the recording is finished, it would then transcode that MPEG-2 transport stream to a H.264 file. I have a bunch of other options here. Obviously, you see some of them there. Transcode to WMV, to QuickTime, to H.264 transport stream, smart chapter. Items that I've touched on earlier, a lot of them are you know, self-explanatory. You can actually, just so you know, you're able to stack these on top of each other. So if I wanted to transcode to H.264 and then smart chapter it, again, our commercial break identification tool, uh, you can stack all these lines. Again, the idea here is just to speed up your workflow, make sure you're not you know, taking up precious time to do these tedious tasks that can run in automatically for you. That's workflows in a nutshell. If you guys have any questions on that, be sure to let us know in our chat box there. But we do only, looks like we only have five minutes left in the hour, and I think we've done a good high level overview of what Snapstream can do. Uh, there's, there's a lot more if we get into the nitty gritty, but again, I want to get you guys out of here at the top of the hour. Let's switch back over to our PowerPoint. There's nothing really left in it except for uh, some contact information. If you have guys have any additional questions, stick around, put them in the chat box. We'll be glad. I'll go through them and see what I can answer for everybody. Uh, if you guys have any additional questions you want me to answer offline, my, my direct line right there, 713-554-4584. You can also reach me at Renee, R-E-N-E, at snapstream.com. Or you can email the entire sales team here at snapstream at sales at snapstream.com. So once again, for those of you that, that have to go ahead and check out right now, I want to thank you guys for joining us. Stick around if you want to uh, ask more questions, want to hear the answers to some of those questions. And again, if you need to reach me offline, or sorry, off the webinar, we have a couple ways to do it here. Uh, but once again, thank you for joining us. We're recording, we've recorded this webinar, so we'll post it up online. If you need to uh, review it or share it with anybody, feel free to pass that link along or ask for the link and we'll get it to you guys. Um, but that, aside from our Q&A that's about to take place, that will continue include our, our, our demo here. Um, again, thank you for joining us, and I'll go ahead and answer these questions for you guys now. Question was, can you add additional storage for archiving shows that you want to use, need to keep? Well, I guess the first question I should answer in there, Snapstream, I mentioned that it, 
earlier when I was talking about the tuners, I mentioned that it normally can hold up to 10 channels or 10 tuners in a single box. You can cluster multiple boxes together if you need more than that. But what I didn't touch on was storage. Our SD boxes will come with, out normally, come with three terabytes of uh, storage. And I believe, I, I might be wrong on summer, but it equates to roughly 3,400 hours of hours of SD content. Our HD uh, boxes will come with nine terabytes of, of storage. And there, I believe that comes to about 1,200 hours of HD content. I might be off a little bit. But that's what our normal boxes come with. You can add additional storage within the box itself. Uh, we do allow you to increase that storage, obviously, for a fee. But the actual question was, can you add, add additional storage to, uh, oh, sorry, I believe it was external storage to, uh, to, to keep content longer? Yes, you can. We do have a index license that, that would pertain to that. So if you have additional external storage that you would like to save content to, but would like to continue to be able to search it, uh, we do have an index license that we can work with you on that to get it set up. Question was, do you have the ability to export clips or shows to for editing or to a playout system? You do. I'm sorry I didn't touch on that. That actually is something very important there. Do you have the ability to export it to a Final Cut Pro or an Avid system? Um, you also do have the ability to play it out uh, over in real time in over a SDI. So you do have those options. You can do it file ba a file-based workflow or you can do a playout workflow, whichever your preference is. Question again, I, I mentioned this a couple times, but the question again was, what is the native format snapstream captured in? It is an MPEG-2 transport stream uh, with, a, with a TP wrapper. And can you export an MPEG-2? Yes, you can, you, can, you can actually export it as that MPEG-2 uh, format. Yes, uh, we'll look in the recorded link, uh, session link. I am not privy to that particular answer. It's once our team actually uh, looks at the recording and pretties it up just a little bit for us. But we'll, after we get it out, we'll send you, out, you guys out the link. If I want to, just let us know in the chat box and we'll send it right over. Ah, good question. I didn't notice I missed this. What happens when the menu data doesn't match the actual broadcast? So I'm assuming what they mean is what happens when, say, it says uh, Sports Center is supposed to air, but it airs a base, but a baseball game is airing instead. What will happen is the metadata in terms of Sports Center and channel and program description will be will be what's present on that particular file, but you'll get the correct closed captioning. For, for, the, for the, what would be in that particular scenario of the baseball game. But the metadata itself is editable. So if it ends up being that that baseball game it takes up that entire slot, uh, you can easily go back in there and just edit the metadata to say baseball game or whatever the appropriate thing is. So uh, it, it won't change because it's incorrect automatically. That data that, I will say this though, we get that data from Tribune Media. and from what we could tell, it's the most accurate thing out there. But you know, mistakes happen. I, it typically, in a, it, typically, it's going to be when in regards to live events, just because, again, like I mentioned in the football game scenario, and even in the baseball game scenario, it's scheduled for three hours. So we all know occasionally there's overtime. But again, editing the metadata uh, kind of fixes that for you. Ask if there is a, a, a limit to the size of a clip or length of a clip. No, there is no inherent duration limits or file size limits. You can, in theory, have a, I'm not quite sure why you would do this, but in theory, you could have a 
30 minute clip if you wanted or a 45 minute clip if you wanted. Um, not quite sure why you would do that, but you have that ability to make something that long if you needed to. I'll, on the flip side, there's no minimum length of a clip either, although I guess it would have to be a minimum of one second, I guess. <laughs> but no, there's no, uh, there's no limits on in terms of duration or file size. doesn't look like we have any more questions rolling in. I'm going to go ahead and stick around just in case we do have a few that do roll in. But once again, I want to thank you guys for joining us here today, taking time out of your schedule to hear about Snapstream. I hope you, you, you heard some interesting things and think it might be a useful thing for you, a tool for you guys. My contact information, again, I'll leave it here on screen for you guys. My name is Renee Pena. I was pulling in for my glove test today. Phone number is 713-554-4584. Email address again is Renee, R E N E, at smashream.com or contact our entire sales team at sales at smashream.com. Again, thank you guys for joining us. Hope to see you guys uh, fairly soon. Again, if you have any questions, be sure to let us know. Thank you. There, quickly, there was a question about IP capture. We can currently capture UDP multicast for IP. We are working on expanding the options there, but currently the only uh, feed we can capture is UDP multicast. 